What's up, Scrollgers? It's Nerp here. And sorry, like, hasn't been daily videos. Uh, there's been, there was no video on Thursday, and there was top plays on Friday. I don't think there was video on Saturday. Um, so, like, it's almost like a couple days here and there I don't upload, which I'll try to make sure I get to almost every day with the waypoints coming out on this coming Tuesday, which is awesome. So excited. Uh, going to go on a huge spending spree. Probably spend like half of this like 237,000 gold. Um, in the meantime, I'll just do some more judgment. Just had a 5-0 run, so that was cool. I played like a decay deck. Uh, yeah, in uh, waypoints, if you get 5 wins, you're going to get 2,500 gold. Right now, it's only 1,600 gold. But the waypoints, uh, when it comes to that's going to be... Uh, it's gonna be to 2,500. That's plus 900, 900 gold. For good players, Judgment is going to be a gold sink. And uh, that worries me a little bit because people like me are gonna be able to get so much gold really fast from Judgment. Just because if I get. Right now, I guess I'm like a really lucky drafter or something because I'm winning. I'm getting five wins in Judgment like 80% of the time I play Judgment now. So. It's almost like. I'm going to be able to get so much gold when no points comes out. And I don't think that should be able to happen. But whatever. Here we are. Uh, this might be my last judgment run in Rebellion. This is still in the Rebellion update. I guess. So we have Champion Thea and then we have the Kinfolk Jarl who's very strong. Uh, but they're a little high cost. Scout Auto is decent and Machinated is versatile in all sorts of decks. And we have a Ragged Wolf here, Meyer Shambler. Return to Nature is okay. I'm going to take the Jarl here. I think, although Machinated could work in uh, most decks, and Thea, I just think, I think Jarl is probably better to have than Thea. Hmm. Thea or Jarl. Thea or Jarl. Well, I mean, there's that Ember Bunch here. That's not too bad. And there's a Sky Thorn. That's a tough choice, but there's a Ragged Wolf, so I'm going to take the arrow because this Ragged Wolf second line. That's the best scroll there. Uh, not great stuff here. I guess if I had the Thea, that'd be good for a charge quill, but let's see. So I'll take the Ragged Wolf. Now, the best scroll here is probably Return to Nature, and I am in Growth, so that could be that could be nice. And there's also Eager Scryer, so I can go Decay Growth. Um, or I could go with the Skythorn to stay with Growth, and we have an Al Alan Vital down here. But I think I will take the Return to Nature. Um, it's a pretty good scroll. Uh, Curse Monger, that's cool. So we have some decay down here. So I'll take the Eager Scryer. And now I see kind of blech stuff down here. Um, I will take the Alon Vital for the Magic Armor over the Animivore that could be used for the, with the Scavenger Construct. And uh, yeah, I'll take the Alon Vital. So I could use that with like a Wildling or something. And now we have a uh, Iron Ogre and a Thunder Surge of Damage Curse too. And a Breaker is good too. Very strong row here. Um, yeah, with waypoints, the, the rows for Judgment are not going to be set on rarity anymore. They're going to be all scrambled up, so you can... Now there's going to be, uh, like, you'll have these rares in different rows. That should be cool. It used to be like that. Uh, I think Carsong is better than Stitcher, so I'm thinking I'm going to take that right here. Um, here's Scavenger Constructs. So maybe I should have taken that Animal War. We'll see. I'll take the... I'll take the Inferno Blast just in case if there's like a really good energy skill that's come down here. I'll take the Iron Ogre. We're kind of all over the place right now, but I don't like being all over the place. Wildling. Okay, that works with Alon Vital. So that, and then, but there's also Echomaton. I could go Ogre. Incendiary's Echomaton, or I can go. I can go Breaker. Crimson Bull, Wildling. Damon Curse. Crimson Bull, Damon Curse. Scavenger Construct to Wildling. I do have a Return to Nature and a Curse Monger. And eager scar, so getting another, getting a damage curse would be pretty good. Direct removal and judgment is awesome. But I'm gonna take the creature. I might that might be a big mistake, but right now it looks like we uh, are gonna be more in growth, especially with this crimson bull and this wildling. So I'll grab that. And there is a might as well and an outcast rebel. And now there's a loyal darkling. Let's see what the next thing is. And then there is crap down here. <laughs> okay. Outcast Rebel is okay. My Aspen Oil is good with poison, but we don't have any poison. And Frost Scale is 
okay, and so spare paw. I think I'll take the creature and outcast orbital. Yeah. Um, this gives me order. There's another alarm that's all for the wildling. That's not too bad. I'll take the loyal darkling. Um, witch doctor. Ooh. Another damn curse. And an ancestral totem. That's gonna be a tough choice. I'll take the ancestral pact here. Another Alon Vital without Wildling. Um, man, this is hard choices. If I am going to be in Decay 2, if I can get a Witch Doctor with all the humans, that'd be unstoppable. That would be unstoppable. We only have a Curse. We could get a Witch Doctor, and then we'll have a Curse Monger down here. Or I can just take the Ancestral Totem. You know, Ancestral Totem does not have enough upside. Like, Witch Doctor has much more upside, even though I might not end up using it, because... Yeah, I think Witch Doctor... Would be, like, amazing. We're still early in the draft. Totem, but we do a lot of growth. How much growth do we have? Nine growth. If I want to go mono, there's an earthen testament. Curse monger. Let's take the witch doctor, I think. Yeah, we'll take the witch doctor. It's, if we can get more decay, that'd be amazing. Okay, and now. I don't know, desperation doesn't really matter. Earthen testament is really good, but let's take the curse monger. Definitely because we just took the witch doctor too. Um, and we still might be able to use the Witch Doctor even in uh, our growth deck if, because we have Return to Nature. But having a 6 cost and a, in Decay and a 7 cost in Growth in the same deck might be tough to get to. Ducal. I'll take the Eternal Sashi, it's not too bad. Blade Husk. Bear Paw. I'll take the. Bear Paw. Um, Brave is pretty good, so I'll take the Bunny, Malevolent Gaze, over the Miasma Well, Brave, I guess Useless Contraption, Puppet Soldier, Eager Scryer, okay, we have more Decay stuff now, do I want Blood, I guess Uneasy Alliance, it's like a champion ring. Stitcher or Skyfloner? I think I want Stitcher. Stitcher, Bog Hound, Light Seed, if I want to disperse one, not an energy. Grizzly Graft is too YOLO for me. Oh god, we don't have a Harvester either. So I'll take the Blight Seed, that could come in handy. I guess Atrophy could stop a big attack. So I'll just grab that and I might use it. Curse Monger overdrew a burial ground. Um, another Eager Scryer, I guess. Uh, Uneasy Alliance. I guess, yeah, we d I think it was good that we took that Witch Doctor. We do seem to have a bunch of Decay stuff. Now I wish I had that, uh, oh, an Infectious Blight. Oh, and there's a Meat Reaping Mask. Um, I guess I should have taken that, uh, Damage Curse earlier on instead of, like, the Breaker, because Breaker doesn't have that much, like, upside, but Damage Curse does, so that was probably a mistake. Here, although Ranger's Bane is nice, Poison, uh, Brain Lice is better. So I'll grab the brain list. There was a rumble there too, but I think we actually have more decay now. Uh, pillar of disease or infected gravelock? I'll take the pillar of disease. I think that's a little bit more effective. And here, uh, I'll take the infectious blight. That is pretty darn good. Um, I don't know. Earthbond. There's a Bloving Seeker down here. That's good. Beetlestone never works. <laughs> In judgment, you need a bunch of them. I'll take the Oblivion Seeker. Uh, I guess. I think we have enough creatures, do we? Uh, Righteous Partisan. The Blood Boy. You have to take the Eye Eagle. None of those are great scrolls. Another Pillar of Disease. There's another Breaker down here. Um, okay, we're going to have to definitely have growth and decay. Now, we have a lot of 
enchantment, so I think I will go with the Earthen Testament. And then go with an Earthbound over the Husk, because Husks kind of suck. And well, the Nature's going to be pretty good, and we're going to see the last row come up right now. And it was a pretty bad last row. Oh well. So, Breaker. Well, in Ranger, Nutrition, even though I'm dying, I'm to use that. Okay. Not sure about this Judgment deck. It has potential, but it's a little, a little hard. Okay, so we're going to start with Decay. Definitely have Return to Nature, so that was really good. Both uh, Uneasy Alliances. Maybe I can get the three E or Sarah as well. Three Curse Mongers. That's really good. Three Curse Mongers and an Infectious Blight and a Brain Lice. That is epic. A Brain Lice, an Infectious Blight, and three Curse Mongers. Witch Doctor, Oblivion Seeker, Stitcher. Okay, those are Decay must haves, basically. And also, Malevolent Gaze, I think, is a must have because of all the poison. Like, we can just give someone, like, Curse 10 if we destroyed an idol already. Which might have been ha might, might have happened with the Eager Stars going off. So that's. Those are Decay must haves. Um, growth must haves. Um. I think we might be. I think we definitely want a Ragged Wolf. We want, like, humans for that Witch Doctor. If I want to stay low in growth, I don't think we're going to get to this Ken Folk Yarl, to be honest. I think that's a little too, uh, it's pushing it. I don't think I'm going to be able to get that high in resources. Let's see. We only have 12 creatures right now. I need another, like, big threatening creature. So I'll go ahead and start by grabbing the Wildling. And... We have a bunch of enchantments. So I'll go with Alon Vital... And both Lamatals, the Earthen Testament. Uh, Breathe. Ranger, Crimson Bull. Okay, uh, these are maybe a Bear Paw. Because that can go on like Eager Scar or Brave or Ranger, so I kind of like that. And the plus one countdown can be uh, disregarded with Earthen Testament. Um, I could go for more enchantments with Earth Bond, or can go with another more decent creatures with Outcast Rebels and Breakers. Let's see what else. So it's Outcast Rebel and a couple Breakers, or this stuff. Target creature controls its countdown increased by two. If it is still on the board at the beginning of your next turn, um, draw two scrolls and increase the K by two. This deck doesn't go that high in resources for either faction. For Decay, it's going to go up to 6 max and only 1 5 drop. So I don't think Blight State is going to be that important. Puppet Soldier is no Horn of Ages, so I don't really think that's needed. Pillar of Disease is not that good of a wall, and Atrophy is not that reliable either. So I think, yeah, we're going to go with the growth stuff. So we'll take both Breakers, because those are pretty good, pretty good uh, creatures. Um, Outcast Herbal, another human. And do I take the Eternal Statue because that's a decent wall? Or do I take another enchantment with to use with Earth and Testament like an Earth Bond? Um, let's go with the Eternal Statue. That's a, Eternal Statue is a little pretty underrated wall. With four health, it's kind of hard to take down. So. This is an interesting deck because it's like almost cut down the middle in terms of growth and decay. So it'll be interesting what I'm going to sacrifice for. Um, like first, it just depends on what my starting hand is. Um, it looks like decay growth has like a slightly lower curve, but decay has that witch doctor, which I really need to get. And it looks like we might be facing all to dust uh, because he, it looks like he was in the queue. Let's see. Let's see if he was waiting for like 10 minutes. No, he wasn't. Penguin 42. Good luck, Mr. Penguin. Um, it looks like we're going to start with going with Decay because we have a pretty good curve. Um, I want to keep that Return to Nature. Also, it's pretty good to start with Decay too because we'll have a Return to Nature to start the ramp to growth. And Energy and starts with the Copper Automaton. I'm happy he starts with the Copper Automaton because he basically wastes that Copper Automaton attacking an idol. Um, I will sacrifice... <sighs> the Alon Vital. I know there's another Alon Vital in the stack, so I don't feel bad sacrificing it. So we'll have something else to put with the Wildling. So, 
yeah, you, you kind of want to save your copper automatons uh, so they can destroy other creatures because they have one captain, so they'll likely attack first. And he didn't have a two drop either, so uh, I don't think it was uh, worth it for him to put down that put down that uh, <sighs> copper automaton. Um, I will sacrifice the loyal darkling because I want to get the three health to attack Bogcound out. Um, Little Darkling is more like a win con and like a judgment deck. Um, the next one I can go Eager Star and then Eager Star again as I try to go into more growth and get that Brave out. Alright, so pretty good start. It would be nice if I can like top deck like a Curse Monger or even the Witch Doctor earlier on. But it's only 30 card deck so the Witch Doctor can't come too late. Alright. Now the other Lombatal, I'm going to sacrifice it. I guess I'll just end up sacrificing the uh, the Waddling when it comes up and wait for like next cycle. Now I'm gonna move like this so that whatever he puts down this turn at turn four will be threatened by at least one creature. I mean, he might have a burn this turn, which would suck, but I can't really protect against that. Um. So next turn, I'll probably sacrifice whatever comes up um, for growth and play a Eager Scryer. I might end up sacrificing the Return to Nature if there's nothing to actually ever destroy with Return to Nature. We'll see. So far, it doesn't look like it. Um, okay, I can easily get out of this thing's range, which is good. And I'm going to do just that. I'm going to sacrifice the Wetland Ranger for growth. So I can play the Brave next turn and play an Eager Scryer. And unfortunately, none of my creatures can reach this spot on the board, so I won't be able to deal damage to the Destroyer. I could, but then I would hurt my own creatures, which I don't think is a wise move. And I'll put this Eager Scryer right there. So again, this turn, I have attacks coming in against the entire board. So hopefully he plays one energy has only one health. I don't even know. Is anything in one health and energy? Alright, that guy's not not too much of a big deal. Let's let's get rid of the Actually Returns Nature is so good though. I don't want to get rid of it. Brave is good too. Um, we're, all, we're already going to be at almost like two growth though. Actually, let's keep the return to nature. I'll sacrifice the brave and play the stitcher. All right. So there goes the plan of, yeah, there goes the plan of, uh, playing that brave. Because I think stitcher is a really powerful card, especially if I can buff up like, like one count on eager survivors. That would be awesome. Alright, right now we have no way of destroying this destroyer. I need like uneasy alliance or something to do that. What you have in the deck? I have a couple. So I could use that offensively if I want to take out a couple of units. Alright. Well, I'll, I'll have something to return to nature this turn. Yes. Unfortunately, I have to sacrifice the bear pile even though I would like to play it this turn. Um, and I. I'm not going to return to nature this turn. I'll return to nature next turn. Uh, because I can just deal damage. I'm not worried about like a bombard play coming. I could just move this guy up and destroy it with uh, this eager scryer. But then he would be in range of the destroyer. So I won't do that. I'm just going to run away with my more important creatures. And I kind of want to get this guy closer to the back. And I'll go like that. So I like my symmetrical board right now. <laughs> So next turn, I will go with a return to nature and maybe sacrifice more growth to play a breaker. But I might not need to go to go to uh, more than two to go to three growth though. These are the wilds. We'll see. Especially again, since my highest costed growth scroll is a wetland ranger, which is only four. Um, I want to keep that infectious blight. So, 
I will sacrifice or if I infectious blight that then if it returns to nature you're gonna get it attacking increase by two but it's not it's not enough to destroy you right, so I will play the returns to nature I will return to nature and outcast rubble I'm not gonna bother attacking that because I know it's just gonna die to a curse with uh, brain lice or infectious blight next turn um, so yeah that is what I'm gonna do and I guess I'll just deal damage to idols and play it out okay, so I could stitch the outcast or something so I can just make a eager scryer stronger but at this point in the game I think I just want to keep filling up the board so he has like no chance of coming back sacrifices for resources So next one I'm going to curse this most likely and then give it brain lice. I've done a little bit of damage to most of the idols on the board. Alright, he has that back in there and an iron ogre so that is his big threat but that should... Armor does not protect against poison damage. So, let's keep the brain lice sacrifice the other curse monger because we have three curse mongers in the deck okay and witch doctor is awesome so we'll start by cursing this we want to get rid of this when we can luckily this is an enchantment out of spells so this won't have four attack um and that infectious blight will jump to this iron ogre where it's not cursed though so uh let's go ahead and so you're gonna get it, and with that being cursed, you're gonna go down to five. Two, yeah, I think I'll do some damage to you. It can't hurt that much, and I'll stay a little bit separated in case of a thunder surge or something. I doubt he has a thunder surge, but you never know. And next turn, I'll probably sacrifice for more decay so I can go with the witch doctor the following turn. That destroyer is a little annoying that I can't really move into the center of the board. Oh well. I don't have a chance to. I'm not gonna have a chance to um, uh, curse this ogre, which is annoying. Okay, we have to. We have to watch out for this. Ooh, crimson bull. Um, it's pretty good, I think. Let's see. Actually, what can I do? What can I do? I don't think I have to brain lice him to kill him. If I hurt him this turn, he's gonna have four health, and then he's gonna take one poison damage. Then it's gonna be my turn. I can curse him, and then he can finish up the rest of the poison damage. Or I can crimson bull this turn, but I don't see what that does for me. At least right now, I don't see what it does. It would just what? It would destroy this. And I can ensure this thing dies, but I don't. I think this curse monger is surviving. He has zero cards. He's top decking too. So I'll sacrifice the crimson bull for wild and uh, move up like this. Deal damage there. And I have to get out of this thing's range. This uh, catapult of goo, and I'll play an eager scryer up here. So next turn is is curse the ogre, the ogre with blast strike, and play a Ilmire witch doctor by sacrificing for more decay. I guess this has worked pretty well so far. I haven't really used much of the growth stuff though. Another iron ogre. So this is a two iron ogre deck. Penguin forty two probably thinks he had a pretty good deck here, but unfortunately for him, my deck seems to be a little. Uh, too aggressive for him. Uh, I was 
as much as I want to use uneasy alliance, maybe I can like top deck another uneasy alliance. Actually, there's a pretty good chance if I had to get the other uneasy alliance in the deck and be able to destroy both ogres this turn using the uneasy alliance. But brain lice, I might need. I might need brain lice. Um, and I want to get the witch doctor out this turn. You know what? Let's play the safe way and not go for the uneasy alliance, like kill, double kill, and just go for the witch doctor. All right, so we'll start by cursing you because we have to curse you. And then I'll destroy, I'll destroy this. And put the witch doctor. I mean, it gets energy. I know he's not, uh. He's not, um. He's not like a constructed deck, so he probably doesn't have Thunder Surge, but against energy, I don't really feel like surrounding all my guys are just because I have a witch doctor. Alright. So. Gun out of its own. Doesn't look like we're gonna have a way to destroy this guy. Ooh, Earthen Testament. I have actually nothing that's enchanted. <laughs> okay, I can enchant my own thing with Brain Lice. And curse him one turn early. Which would be not being able to sacrifice, so I don't think that'd be worth it. Uh Let's start using Stitcher. We have a pretty filled board. Let's start using Stitcher. Um, or we can actually win pretty soon. Let's go ahead and play a Brain Lice. And then play... A wildling and stitch this dude to this guy. Get a husk. Move like this. I realize all my guys are connected right now, but I don't really care. And there we destroyed. Yeah, all my guys are connected. But we destroyed two idols there. And next turn I might be able to win by destroying bottom idol or top idol. Maybe I can destroy both idols. And if I if he protects top and bottom idols well, I could just curse his I could curse his uh ogre and it would die. And that was really unlucky for him. <laughs> that was really un really unlucky. He should have put it in the top uh, top row. Does he not realize I'm gonna win bottom row here? I don't think he knows. I don't think he knows. Oh come on, did he really just disconnect on me? So I have to wait this out. That's annoying. Um, I see he's not the friendly type. No, uh, no good luck. Have fun back from him. But oh, I guess I'll have to wait and win next turn. All right. And there's no extra reward for destroying extra idols in judgment. So I'm not maybe I could destroy the stop idol. I don't know. Maybe I can. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. Our turn. Woohoo. So can we win? I mean we can win, but no we cannot destroy multiple idols all right so there's one one with this deck awesome that was a pretty perfect perfect match for us we drew everything like when we needed it and stuff like that